Did you know that India is constructing the world's largest nuclear power plant with French collaboration? The Jaitapur Nuclear Power Plant in Maharashtra will have an installed capacity of 9.6 gigawatts when completed with its six EPR reactors and will dethrone the Kashi Wazaki Kariwa nuclear power plant in Japan from the global top spot. Also, with 23 operational units, India has more nuclear power plants than developed nations like Canada and the UK, for example. Now, the United States of America has shown eagerness to boost its strategic alliance and energy partnership with the world's fastest growing large economy, India. The White House is now delisting Indian nuclear entities from US restrictions list providing a huge boost to nuclear energy ties between the world's largest democracies, as well as strengthening India's efforts to meet the increasing energy demands of its growing population and booming industries. US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan announced this decision during his India visit, saying, quote, The US is now finalizing the necessary steps to remove long-standing regulations that have prevented civil nuclear cooperation between India's leading nuclear entities and US companies." Unquote. These Indian entities included the Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, the Bhaba Atomic Research Center, along with nuclear research centers such as the Indian Rare Earth, along with fuel reprocessing and enrichment and heavy water facilities involved in India's nuclear program. All these will now be lifted from the US restrictions list. The decision paves the way now for the completion of a two-decade-old landmark nuclear deal involving the supply of US nuclear reactors and technology to energy-hungry India. The pivotal agreement was sanctioned by former US President George W. Bush in 2007 in a meeting with then-Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh allowing to sell civil nuclear technology. But what had been the delay since then? The deal was not fruitful due to a major hurdle of India's liability rules, which differ in accordance with international standards. Those standards mandate that the operator and not the manufacturer of a nuclear power plant should bear the cost of any accidents. However, in India, some of the liability also rests with the original suppliers. Now, India's adherence to stringent nuclear compensation laws has in the past impeded any deals with international power plant manufacturers, preventing civil nuclear cooperation. Moreover, these laws have led to the country postponing its goal of adding 20 gigawatts of nuclear power capacity from 2020 to 2030. However, now progress can gather pace. The top US official added that formal paperwork will be done soon and will offer an opportunity to turn the page on some of the frictions of the past and create opportunities for entities that have been on restricted lists in the United States to come off and to enter into deeper collaboration with US-based private sector, scientists and technologies. Now, in the aftermath of India testing its nuclear weapon in 1998, the United States had spearheaded an embargo on 200 Indian atomic energy companies, with many lifted over the years as bilateral ties strengthened between the world's largest democracies. According to the US Federal Register, the US Export Administration Bureau in 1998 barred entities like the Department of Atomic Energy, Bhaba Atomic Research Center, as well as the Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, along with others, as mentioned earlier. Now, the recent move aims to enhance civil nuclear energy cooperation between the United States of America and India, facilitating a more robust partnership in clean energy as well as advanced technologies. Moreover, this visit to India was Sullivan's last overseas trip as the US National Security Advisor, highlighting the strategic ties between the two nations. During the trip, Sullivan met his counterpart, Indian National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar, while he also called upon the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He further asserted, quote, As we work to build clean energy technologies to enable growth in artificial intelligence and to help US and Indian energy companies 
unlock their innovation potential. The Biden administration has determined that it is past time to take the next major step cementing this partnership." Unquote. But what is nuclear energy's contribution in India? And why is India betting big on nuclear energy? India's stature as a responsible player in the global nuclear energy sector is already known to the world. India has made striking progress and has ambitions and targets to grow its nuclear capacity over the next decade or so. While the nuclear power generation capacity is expected to increase by around 70% in just the next five years, from the current capacity of 46 terawatt hours in 2023, with a total installed capacity of 7,425 megawatts, India has total 22 to 23 power reactors which are currently operational, yet nuclear power accounts for a mere 3% of the country's total electricity production, which is still largely dominated by coal. Additionally, eight reactors with 6,000 megawatt capacity are under construction at various stages by Bhavini. Moreover, the government has accorded administrative approval as well as financial sanction for the construction of a further 12 nuclear power plants till 2031, after which the nuclear capacity in India is expected to reach 22,480 megawatt, or three times the current total. In October 2024, India also joined the big guns in the global race for small or modular nuclear reactors by supporting the construction of about 50 of them through public-private partnership. India's Nuclear Power Cooperation, or NPCIN, will be responsible for constructing, managing, and operating 220 megawatt Bharat small reactors for private players. A government official confirmed, quote, the funding and the land for the nuclear plant will be made available by the private player, but the plant will be managed by the NPCIL, unquote. The goal is to replace existing captive thermal power plants, reduce carbon emissions, and achieve the goal of net zero emissions by 2070. B.C. Pathak, Chairman and Managing Director of the Nuclear Power Cooperation of India, highlighted in January 2024 India's vision and dedication towards adopting cleaner energy by commissioning one nuclear power reactor every year from here on. So is nuclear energy the only solution for India's growing energy needs? Leave a comment with your opinion, hit the like button and subscribe to InConnect News.